I'm Ben Turpin and welcome to Whip Finish Industries, the final step in your fly fishing experience. Today I want to talk to you about the GPS Stonefly Nymph. This is a nymph that you're really going to want to have in your box in October, but also throughout the winter and throughout the entire fishing season. Stoneflies live in a creek uh, for up to three years before they hatch, so they're an insect that the fish are going to see on a regular basis. So the, nymph, the stonefly nymph is very important to the fly fishermen, especially in times when there's not a lot of mayflies and caddisflies hatching. So as we go into the fall and winter and you're not seeing as many uh, bugs on the surface, start thinking about stonefly nymphs as one of your options for the flies you should be uh, presenting to the trout. So the GPS stonefly is a fly that I created many years ago. Uh, it's a variation of the Harvey stonefly nymph. Uh, with some new modern materials. So we're going to start out with an Umpqua U204 hook. All right, so we want a 2x long curved stonefly hook. And we're going to use a tungsten bead because we want this fly to get down quickly and we want to get to the fish. So we're going to use a tungsten 8th inch, eighth inch bead with this size 12 hook. All right, so we're all set up in our regal vise with our curved stonefly hook and the tungsten bead. We're going to use some yellow uh, six-aught tying thread. So you could use it, the light Cahill color, works well. And the reason I use a yellow thread is because I want it to blend in with the body color. And this is going to be a, a stonefly with a yellow, a, a light yellow color body. So. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is something a little different. We're going to, instead of go to your fly shop, we're going to go to your medicine cabinet and we're going to use a little bit of cotton. Uh, you can take a cotton ball and just kind of pull it apart. And the cotton is going to be the base for the fly. And you're going to see later we're going to take this fly and, and actually smash it with a pair of pliers and make it a wide, flat stonefly nymph. So from about two thirds of the way back on the hook shank, we're going to start our cotton and we're going to make kind of a, a carrot tapered shape back up towards the bead. All right. So this is going to be our base underneath our, our lead wire. So now we're, now we're going to take some 15 thousandths lead wire and we're going to put it up underneath the bead like I like to do. And we're going to take a few wraps of thread and, and tie that in. And now we're just going to work our way back down the cotton with our lead wire. And we want to make sure we get nice tight wraps. And we're going to wrap about halfway back down the hook shank over that cotton. All right? So that's going to give us a nice heavy fly. We've got tungsten bead. We've got several wraps of, of lead wire. Now we're going to wrap our tying thread through the wire loosely. We don't want to go real tight. And then when we get to the end, at the end of the lead wire, we're still on top of the cotton. We're going to taper this down so we have a nice tapered uh, section that we're going to tie our fly over. So stoneflies are very wide insects, they're very broad. When they wash down through the current they rock back and forth and that's the whole reason we're, we're putting all this effort into our underbody because when we take this fly and smash it flat it's going to give us a nice wide stonefly nymph that's going to rock in the water. So we've got our thread back at the bend of the hook we're going to use some dark brown um, uh, turkey bites. I'm going to snip two of those off the quill there and we're going to tie those in. And again, I like to tie mine in so they're, it's a very broad tail. Stoneflies have um, very obvious tails, two tails on a stonefly, and we're just going to kick them out at a 45 off the back of the hook. Again, I lay my hand on the back of the vise use my fingertip to hold that in place. So now that we've got our turkey bite tail in, we're going to take a slip of uh, turkey tail here and that's going to be the back of our fly. So we're going to take our turkey and we're going to cut out probably about a quarter inch section of the turkey tail. And uh, I like to trim the end off and I like to try to get some of that modeling of the turkey in the fly. Okay, but the big thing is, is we want to have a dark top to the fly and a light belly to the fly. So after we get our turkey tied in, we need to take some medium gold wire 
And we're going to tie that in right at the bend of the hook as well. Because that's going to be our rib. And then we're going to take some CDC dubbing. Now most people don't think of CDC dubbing in nymphs, but this dubbing, when we pick it out, is going to give us uh, lots of gills and lots of, of fibers around the fly and um, going to give us a really nice buggy looking stone fly. So we're going to use some pale yellow Trout Hunter CDC dubbing. Again, like all of our videos, you can scroll down below and you can uh, find all the materials that we're using tying this fly listed below, which makes it easy to get the correct materials for tying the fly. So I wrapped my CDC dubbing and I'm probably a little over a bead's width uh, away from the bead. And that's going to give me enough room to make my thorax and put legs in. So we want to make sure we have some room left over in the front of the fly. We're going to take our turkey and we're going to fold it over. Take a couple wraps over top of it. Trim off the excess. And we're going to take our medium wire and we're going to wrap that up through the body of the fly. And nice even spaces. Try to keep the CDC from getting trapped in the wire and that will give you that nice dark top. And we're going to tie off our wire. Take that wire and put it right in the back of the scissors so you can cut it that way. Then we're going to take some uh, mottled bustard colored thin skin and that's going to be our wing case. It's going to give us a little bit of shine, uh, you know, slight uh, flash, but uh, the main thing is it's going to give us a nice durable wing case. And I'm actually going to wrap back and I'm over the turkey and the, and the yellow CDC dubbing a little bit because I want to make sure I have a nice pronounced wing case. It should be uh, a good size and because uh, stoneflies have very large wing cases. So I'm going to take a little more of the CDC dubbing and I'm going to dub a, a nice thorax. And it's okay to be a little chunky with this dubbing. You want to have a good solid thorax. And we're going to pick it out and it's going to you know, help create legs and movement as well. All right. So again, we're going to wrap our Trout Hunter Pale Yellow CDC dubbing towards the eye of the hook. And we're going to stop just short of the bead. I actually want to go a little further, so I'm going to add a little more in. It's always better to be able to add on than to have to subtract. So you can always add, when you go to pull it apart to subtract, it usually causes a mess. All right, so now we're going to take a little uh, hen back. You know, great all around for tying your nymph legs. Uh, you get a, a, a hen back, they're inexpensive, and uh, you can tie tons of nymphs with them. Again, we'll scroll down through there, you'll find all the material you need. We're going to tie this hen back feather in, grab our hackle pliers, and we're just going to take like two turns to create some legs. One thing about henback, it's very delicate and you just got to be gentle with your your uh, hackle pliers. And you see how it kind of clumps? If you just take your finger, you can brush it out and the fibers spread out nice for you. So we just took two turns and now I'm going to wrap through it, hold it in place. And I'm going to take these fibers and I'm just going to separate them so I can get my wing case through the middle of them. All right, and they're going to smash down a little bit, but that's all right. That's the look we're, we're looking for. I'm going to take two or three turns over our wing case and secure it. I lift it up. I put some turns in front of it to lock it in. Pull up on your thin skin material, and that way when you cut it, it kind of snaps back down in there a little bit, and it uh, leaves you a little more room for finishing. Now, when I first started tying this fly, uh, I would finish it just like that, and I really didn't mind that little lump, but a friend of mine, Garen Fredericks, decided that it was a great idea just to take a little tiny bit of CDC dubbing and wrap it over top of that uh, tag end of the wing case, and it makes it look a little more finished, and I think he did the right thing when he added that step to this fly. Again, you know, this is all about the correct steps and the correct materials to get the fly that you're looking for. So I've whip finished my fly. That's our final step in tying the fly. But now we want to make this thing a little buggier 
and get the profile that we want. So I'm just going to take a dubbing brush. Um, you can purchase dubbing brushes. And sometimes you can just take your a gun cleaning brush also works. And see how it made that fly really buggy looking. And the final step to making the Terp, Terps GPS stone fly is to take a pair of pliers, a smooth jaw pair of pliers, and squeeze the fly. And that makes the fly nice and wide and it's going to help it rock in the water. Again, stone flies are going to be really important in October and throughout the fall and winter. So the GPS stone fly is going to be a productive fly to have in your box. And uh, you can scroll down and find all the materials we used to uh, tie this fly. And if you um, continue to watch Whip Finish Industries, you're going to find more flies for the fall and throughout the fly fishing season. Thank you for watching Whip Finish Industries, and we look forward to seeing you soon.